We'll see that the variance out here in this format is looking quite interesting. Kong's cards kicked off another online event here. This time we were having it for Lulu Walleth and Dragon Shield sleeves, but 45 duelists stepped up that wanted to play here. Your top 16 is kind of interesting. Um, now keep in mind that I mean usually top eight's what matters, but I've been doing the little extended charts here. Just gonna show everybody what's going on here. So in top 16, one fourth of the field was actually dedicated to Sprite, which is kind of interesting. You know, when you can see, you know, that extension gap here, and honestly, like the power that Sprite's kind of bringing to the table right now, like Sprite feels like it is so far ahead by about a hundred miles in comparison to the rest of the format. Coming up right behind it actually is branded here with three in our top 16, which I think is kind of impressive by itself. Then we follow it up with Sword Soul, so we actually are seeing a little bit of good old reliable here, as we're going to call it, making its way into top 16. And then we had two Vanquish Soul. Hmm. You know, the control deck, finally doing control decky things out here. We had a Scareclaw Kashtira as well. In, very interestingly enough, I mean, you have a Scareclaw Kashtira variant, and you have regular Kashtiras. Technically, you do have two uh, two copies of Kashtira, but uh, the Scareclaw Kashtira was literally just like six Kashtira cards. So I wanted to point that out. We also have a Thunder Pile in top 16, Dragon Link, and Hero as well. So pretty diverse top cut for that. Now, when you shift on into top eight, this is where the real madness begins. We had three sprite decks in top cut, and actually first and second were both sprite out of this event. You're going to get the chance to see, you know, where the madness is starting to head in the format because of that. And then we had two branded decks here as well, which once again, uh, we're kind of seeing Despia edge itself out here a little bit more ahead of the rest of the competition. I, I think that's genuinely a very interesting thing to see. And then of course, where our, Sca or, uh, our Scareclaw Kashtira deck returns in top cut here, once again showing us that, hey, you know, like, we're doing something, and, you know, depending on when you see the list here, you know, how much of that package is, like, extended, how much of it, you know, make sure that you can cover your bases is good. And then, of course, we had Dragon Link as well. I honestly do think the Dragon Link is one of those decks that the more you're going to see it actually show up, because the deck's, like, grind game is better than it's, like, ever actually been. And then, of course, we have Vanquish Soul making it on in the top eight as well. I was so happy to see, you know, Vanquish Soul actually crossing over that threshold and actually making its way into, you know, the higher seats of top cut here, actually being a deck, which I think is genuinely, like, super impressive. All right, we're going to pass on over to those deck lists for you. Winning our event here was, guess what, Sprite with the Brave Package. I really shouldn't be that strange um, to seeing this because, I mean, like, this is kind of like old reliable to make sure that you can go through the game. Uh, double cross back in the main deck. We have filtering options here. And, yes, we are playing Eradicator Epidemic Unfun Virus here because, you know, tributing off Gigantic after you've met the requirements to do your thing is really, really good. And then, of course, you know, the ability to make the Melfi puppy on into the Herald. Yep, it's, it's pretty good. Next up here is, yes, this is a sprite deck with, you guessed it, um, 14 card side deck. Didn't have any room for the other one. Remain deck and Feather Duster, which is fine. I see that we are playing Ghost Mourner Moonlit Chills in here. Once again, you see that little Melvi package in here making room for the Herald because it's actually that good. But overall, I mean, both these sprite lists feel incredibly standard, but you can kind of bring to the table, but it does show that Adventure and Non-Adventure are both very good. Next up here, we have our Cash Deer uh, Scare Claw decks. This is what I was talking about. You see, like, you have your package in here, and you extend through, you know, this to make sure that, you know, <laughs> you, you get access to, like, all of your lines of play down here so you can do your thing. I think a lot of people are going to be um, taken aback by how this deck works. We're also citing really eternal, or excuse me, we're citing Mind Drain here, which is kind of interesting as well. So this deck does push a lot of the limits, I think, for things that we've seen in the format. Next up here... This is a Vanquishal deck playing Super Agent Blaster. We have Duran Dolls in here. This is a little bit different than what I'm kind of used to seeing. I figure, you know, you you play like TC Booze or something like that to kind of control your opponent. No, you're using this as like an extension package, which is pretty good. I mean, 
stack them up is pretty good, especially when you can make Zeus. And we also have access to Phantasmae and Eradicator. This is by far one of the more interesting builds that we have seen working out here. Next up here we have our first Despia list. Hi yuck. Hello Triple Super Polymerization. I'm really glad that I could fuse with my opponent's monsters today. Well, the Bellion, we're actually playing Baldrake, Druus, we're Magna Hunt's Hernia. Wow, the whole squad is here. We're also focusing only on two Fallen of Albas, which is kind of interesting. I see we have Evenlies in here as well. Um, I don't see anything else really too crazy for this. Um, I feel like this deck, I mean, some people might think the draw's a little bit out of place, but I guess. Next up here we have, oh boy. More Sprite, but this time we actually are on what people are projecting to be one of the better engines here because Runic Fountain is really, really solid as a card. Like, and trust me, it's still old reliable at this stage. We have the evenly matches here. We have Red Resonator for time. I mean, this this is the variant that everybody's very used to seeing because this did so much previously that it's it's crazy that it hasn't done more yet. Uh, next up is Dragon Link. Hi, Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon. Uh, we are packing in, yeah, Triple Ash, Triple Droll, and Triple Valor. And we do have infinite permanences in here. I feel like, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, Droll's done, but it, it's still doing its thing here. Uh, we have Lancius for defense, so we've kind of returned back to this. And then, let's see, Talents, Evenly. All the side deck is very, very standard, and I do love the Fallen of Albaz that just makes its way on in to a deck like this. And then our last top eight here is another branded list here. You do see Blazing Cartesia at two, um, Triple Fallen of Albaz. We have the Crossout Designators. We've we've talked a lot about Crossout Designators, like early expectancy in this format here, because having this as a, you know, tool defense option is like absolutely necessary to make sure that you can do what you want to do. So that is what we're dealing with here for top eight. Overall, not too bad. Now as we shift on in, all right, ninth place here was actually Swordsville. Actually, a little bit sad to see that we missed out on the gap here. Uh, we are actually siding Epsilon. Well, I love the fact they're siding Epsilon and they didn't even bother with uh, Gamma, actually. Uh, you figured that you would try one, one Gamma, two Epsilon, Nah, no point. Um, <laughs> no, uh, no real reason needed. Actually, I guess more tooled defensive options. But main deck looks incredibly standard. Next up here, we have hi, Cash Tira. Oh, so this is what old reliable looks like. I feel like you got the shifters in the main ashes for defense options. Monster lineup is fine. Play the one big bang. Actually, play the one evenly matched, so you can you know th talents or th you know thrust into either of the option trees that you need. We do decide the additional, um, that way we can pull it if need be. And we're playing the Raid Raptor Napalm Dragonius for damage. Oh boy, you gotta love time. Next up here is Azzy's Thunder Runic pile. And uh, just seeing that this is this has been the result of this man's crazy testing, it's amazing. You, you can think Necroface here for just being a stupid dump engine. You get recyclability here. And then you just tighten set up through this pack. It, it's so many engines brought together that it is working. All right? The one mad lad in the whole world's playing this. Next up here is another sprite list here. Uh, once again, now, it's four variations of things that we're seeing here. Um, we're actually playing the Evil Twin Package in this. I mean, obviously, the revivability that you get off the Evil Twin Package is, like, absolutely incredible for defensive options. Like, don't underestimate that. I see standard sprite stuff. We are main deck and one mind control in here as well, which is good. And then we are citing the one double cross. But overall... I like what we're seeing here for this. Next up here we have Vanquish Soul. Uh, now this is the TC boot control. We're playing the Trinity Burst, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and then of course Kurikara's Fenrir's. Uh, none of that blaster shenanigans that you saw with the other list, which once again is interesting. You know, when you see difference in variations and opinions, I, I think that's quite interesting overall. Uh, we have Chaos Angels, Zeus is down. Everything down here in the extra deck, I think, is incredibly standard for this. Next up here we have another Sword Soul list. Uh, this build is getting a little spicy. We're playing Sword Soul Punishment with the Chun Chun. And uh, then we are playing Senshin down here. And of course, the thing that's making a lot of people really look at this deck right now, 
is honestly Gravity Collapse. I, I think that this card, like actually having this resolve, is actually incredibly good. And I, like this is a free auto shutout button to a lot of your opponents. So interesting. Next up here we have Hero playing a 14 card side deck again. Um, I do see, we have some Droll and Lockbird sticking around in here, okay. Hero lives, blast out, um, dot deck, aka, you know, <laughs> make DP pass, you know, Dark Law. Um, there's not a lot of, I guess, like, craziness you get with this deck. It is kind of nice to see that Droplets has found a very, very nice position back into the format here as well. Um, outside of that, good stuff. And I swear this is the same duelist that played Despia last time and got 16th place. I feel like they, they did it twice between both tournaments, placing uh, that high. But it's very interesting. I see that they are signing the Albion, Alba Lenitus, and the Starving Venom. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Then, of course, Necro Banshee with the Gimmick Puppet also being cited here. But I feel like this is a little bit different of a take for what we've seen from a lot of the other variations and things out here. So overall, not too bad. So what do you guys think? Please, if comment down below to what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.